Vishnupada Padamahamsa Parivraja Kacharya Ashtata Sadishri Esi Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada Ki Jai Nantakota Vaishnavrinda Ki Jai Namacharya Shla Haridas Thakur Ki Prensikho Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadha Sri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktivinda Ki Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopa Gopinath Shamakunda Radha Kunda Giri Govardhan Ki Shri Vrindavan Dham Ki Shri Mayapur Dham Ki Ganga Maya Ki, Yamuna Maya Ki, Tulasi Deva Ki, Bhakti Deva Ki Samaveta Bhakti Vinda Ki, Lord Chaitanya Sarinama Sankirtanam Ki Vihatma Danga Ki, Shri Prabhupada Ki Gaura Prima Nandi, Gvantara Shrima Bhagavatam Ki Jai, O Glorious Tis Sampatavas, O Glorious Tis Shri Guru Shri Guru and Garanga, O Glorious Tis Prabhupada Namah Vishnu Daya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Shumati Bhakti Vedanta Shwamit Namani Namaste Sadasvate Deve Gauravani Vichana Namaste Sassin Vati Pasti Chata Shatani Hare Krishna How many of you are going on book distribution today? Most of us You two are not going out on books today, you're staying back You brothers? No Spiritual brothers You have a lot in common, I can feel the vibe Very wonderful and Shamala has come all the way from St. Louis. Saint, you came this morning or last night? Last night. How, where did you stay? Uh, Iskon Temple. In Atlanta? Yeah. At the Is- At Iskon Atlanta Temple. Oh, wow. You, you also came, you brought her over? How did you get here? <laughs> I was here from Maharaj. Huh? I was here. You were there. I live here. You were there. She lives here. She lives here. Yeah, you live here, but I'm saying, how did you come over? All the way from St. Louis? Yes. How far is it? It's like 10 hour drive. 10 hour drive, my God, you drove all the way here. You were so sincere. And you, two of you came together. Uh, she's from China, Mark. Pardon? She's from China. I just met her, she serves at the East Coast Atlanta. And so you came alone? Yeah. Your husband didn't come? No? Wow. Hare Krishna. Ten hours drive. That's quite something. San Louis. You've been there? Yes. Sankatan. The old Sankatan devotees here in this temple. Book distributors. Some of them have already left. Three or four of them left this morning for book distribution. Maharati left, right? Two left yesterday. Huh? Two left yesterday. Yeah, three left yesterday. Two or three? Two. Two. Two left to go to Kentucky or somewhere yesterday. And deliver the chickens in Kentucky and three of them have gone to the Tamil temple this morning, early morning, big festival, Diwali festival today and uh, Maharati went, right? The Maharatis, the Maharatis went. Mahotsaha, the world's top book this year, headed off at 6.30 this morning and they'll be back about 11 I suppose. Something like that. that, Target today? I think 2,000, isn't Maybe it? 2,000 2, books 8, today. 8, huh? 8, Two to three. Two to three yeah. thousand books today. That's, the, that's his target. See what Krishna arranges. Can you bless us? Can huh? Can you bless us, Martin? <laughs> what can I say? I, a blessing. What can, what can I say? Prabhupada. We can pray to Prabhupada who is qualified to bless us all. He's already blessed us all. We just have to hold on to it firmly and never let go. His blessings are eternal, unlimited, ever expanding. We just have to hold on tight to them. And so, what are we? We can just try to inspire each other to take those blessings. We have no power as such. Just good wishes, we can say. I know it's a business. Certainly that's there. But we also know from, it, from life, Whatever little lifetime we've had, 
in this miserable body. We also know that, you know, blessings come in unusual ways sometimes. They don't always come in, you know, the way we plan them. <laughs> Krishna wants us to go back to Godhead. And let's bring this table a little closer. Right? It's hard enough to read from that far away. Even close, it's difficult. Well, we, we were reading a purport yesterday. Yes. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya This is the wrong verse. What verse are we on? It's verse 30 here. It's not the verse we're on. Mark, Mark, where's, oh, maybe here, the marker. Five, five, five. Huh? Five, five. Is this it? Here, four, here, yeah. number four. Three, five, four. Three, five, four. And we read a little bit of the purport yesterday, but we didn't finish it, if I'm not mistaken. Where do we get to? Does anyone remember? We finished this uh, quote that Shri Prabhupada has from the Bhagavad Gita. So there, yeah, I think you finished that up. Yeah, we finished that paragraph. Pardon? Jnani, yogis, and karmas. Okay, let's start there. Let's start the mic. Even if it, we did read, I don't think we did, you're right. Let's see what I have to do this just to hold the book. I can't hold it in my hands for so long. The Jnanis. Well, let's read the verse. Let's chant the verse together. Tad sadu vat yadisha vatma sanghyana Sangradito bhagavan yena pumsam Vidhisito yachati bhakti pute Janam satat vadigamam puranam Tad sadu vayadisha vartma shangna Sangradito bhagavan yena pungsam Virisito yachati bhakti pute Janam satat vadigamam puranam Oh, my gosh. Shanti, anyone want to shant? Sangradito Bhagavan Yena Pung Sam Sangradito Bhagavan Yena Bhakti Pute Samradito Bhagavan Yena Pung Sam Samradito Bhagavan Yena Pung Sam Sat Sadhu Varya Dishabhat Samradito Bhagavan Yena Pung Sam Ladies Shanti Shanti Tasadivaya de Shabat Masanga Sangradito Bhagavan Yena Pungsam Sangradito Bhagavan Yena Pungsam Sangradito Bhagavan Yena Pungsam 
I won't read the word for word because you got to go on Sankirtan today. And we're going to move things forward here. Translation. Therefore, this is Vidura speaking to Maitreya. Therefore, O great sage, please give me instruction on the transcendental devotional service of the Lord, so that he who is situated in the heart of everyone can be pleased to impart from within knowledge, the absolute truth, in terms of the ancient Vedic principles delivered only by those who are purified by the process of devotional service. Only to those purified by the process so that we were discussing a little bit yesterday. And we'll start in the second paragraph of the purport, the Gyanis. The Gyanis, Yogis and Karmis cannot expect this direct co cooperation of the Lord. They are not able to satisfy the Lord by transcendental loving service, nor do they believe in such service to the Lord. The Bhakti process as performed under the regulated principles of Vaidhi Bhakti or devotional service, following the prescribed rules and regulations, is defined by the revealed scriptures and confirmed by great acharyas. This practice can help the neophyte devotee to rise to the stage of Raga Bhakti, in which the Lord responds from within as the Chaitya Guru or the spiritual master as a super consciousness. All transcendentalists other than devotees make no distinction between the individual soul and the super soul because they let's read that again. All transcendentalists other than devotees make no distinction between the individual soul and the super soul because they miscalculate the super consciousness and the individual consciousness to be one and the same. Such so miscalculation by the non-devotees makes them unfit to receive any direction from within. And therefore they are bereft of the direct cooperation of the Lord. After many, many births, when such a non-dualist comes to sense that the Lord is worshipable and that the devotee is simultaneously one with and different from the Lord, then only can he render unto the Lord service. Only then can he surrender, rather, unto the Lord, Vasudev. Pure devotional service begins from that point. The process of understanding the absolute truth adopted by the misguided non-dualist is very difficult. Whereas the devotee's way of understanding the absolute truth comes directly from the Lord, who is pleased by devotional service. On behalf of many neophyte devotees, Vidura, at the very first instance, Inquire from Maitreya about the path of devotional service by which the Lord, who is seated within the heart, can be pleased. Amazing verse and purport by Srila Prabhupada. How merciful Vidura is to inquire on our behalf and Prabhupada to clarify for her own uh, covered intelligence and consciousness to, um, to clarify the exact application of this or the practical application of these words of Vidura. Now, if someone would kindly bring a Bhagavad Gita, if there's one here, that would be nice. Um, and we'll just briefly, we don't want to keep, oh, that's a lovely version. Is it English? Yes, oh, it's, it's that Martin. deluxe version. Deluxe version. So, in this purport, what we've read today, that is, not yesterday, but uh, what verses from Bhagavad Gita would you see Prabhupada referring to here? Although I don't think they're directly um, mentioned. Pardon? Which was say again? No, from Bhagavad Gita. You're, you've risen to the higher platform of Srimad Bhagavatam. Stick to Bhagavad Gita. 
today, what we just read, not what we read yesterday. That was in yesterday's verse. Yes. Which one of the asking Arjuna is asking Krishna again continue? You are on the right path, I believe. Uh, which one of the translations is better? The okay, let's go there. That's in the twelfth chapter. It's the very beginning of the twelfth chapter of Bhagavad Gita. If you have your Bhagavad Gita's, you can read this. It's, which chapter is devotional service? Who knows? Before you get out. Which chapter of the Bhagavad Gita is devotional service? Chapter called devotional service. Which chapter number? Twelve. Well done. So chapter twelve, text number one. We'll just read the first three or four verses from there. It's so good to hear these, let's say, connections. Where the whole purpose of Krishna consciousness is to connect with Krishna, to reconnect with Krishna. So when we connect with the spiritual master, he gives us the path by which we can reconnect with Krishna. When Krishna sees that through the pro following that path that our hearts are becoming purified, he cleanses the heart, of course, as we dedicate ourselves to the path given by the pure devotees, the external manifestation of the super soul in the form of spiritual master, Guru, Shastra and Sadhu, the external manifestations of the super soul at this stage. And then when it comes to that stage, and of course, not everyone comes to it. Prabhupada said in this purple, Gyanis, Karmis, Yogis, they don't come to this stage of Ragamarg. They're stuck in their own path, whatever that may be, which leads to a different destination. The path, at least the path given by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the path which we're talking, talked about here a little bit, is to our eternal constitutional position. I was hearing Prabhupada saying that this morning in a lecture, he was just saying that this automatically from within, this is revealed by the Lord. It's not something you kind of like, you know, concoct and try to artificially implement a certain type of behavior to, with the idea of awakening that particular relationship with Krishna. It doesn't work like that. It's the Lord within the heart reveals it. When the heart, you know, when we're sincerely following his instructions, his pure devotees and the instructions they give us, then the Lord gives that inspiration within. Then, we, then it's confirmed with the spiritual master. It's not actually that the spiritual master necessarily tells you like that. He confirms it or otherwise. And then the direction, both the inspiration within the Lord and at that stage when Raga awake. Raga means spontaneous attraction to relationship with Krishna and a particular spirit of devotion. Right now there's a reflection of that raga or an element of that raga. Some devotees are intensely attached to cooking or just doing books or driving 10 hours in a car all the way from St. Louis. You like driving or something? God, I can't imagine driving 10 hours. But anyway, some people love to drive. You know, it's not exactly a, a kind of like, what's your service in the spiritual world, driving a car or something, but you could be a carrier of Krishna, there's different things, you have a nice palanquin or some beautiful arrangements there. But uh, that's on another level. But on our level, we're attracted to certain things. Maybe you like managing. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. But some people do, some devotees do, some devotees like technical things. I see some of you are expert here at tech, technical stuff, computers and what have you, and I don't know, you're the one. You're the master, master of the affairs. I saw so many of you young men are bright in this area. Some are good in music and art and whatever, or any kind of thing, you know. We have a kind of a natural attraction for it, but it, it's, only, it's only temporary, it's a kind of reflection, but it, maybe in this lifetime or some lifetimes, but it's not necessarily indicative of a permanent um, stai bhav or eternal uh, relationship with Krishna, not necessarily. But the principle we can learn from that, you know, is probably, probably most of us when we were kids, we had certain things which we were really into. Um, I don't want to embarrass anybody, um, but you may have been into, some kids are really into boys, particularly into sport. Maybe girls are into, I don't know, 
dressing dollies or something. I don't know what girls do. I think they do things like that. Because <laughs> later on you're going to be, you know, with babies and you're going to be dressing babies and things like that, you know. Dressing your own bodies as well, of course. But men are not so much into that, usually. Yeah, isn't it? They're more into kind of like macho things, you know, hard, heavy sports and fighting and, you know, you know, wild things. I wasn't so much, I guess I was into sport, but I was, when I was a kid, maybe eight years old, nine years old, I was already designing t cities, towns, town planning. I had no idea why, it just spontaneously I was attracted to do it. And I studied it later on in my life, only up to a certain point and then gave it up for another plan. <laughs> but uh, it's out there, it's like some attraction we have and you kind of automatically have an inclination towards things related to that in this lifetime, karma. Karma is a reflection, perverted reflection. So there is, there is an element of that natural raga. It's not just about, you know, check it all out and see what happens. But everyone has a certain raga, whatever it may be, conditional. And that's their spiritual soul. And that will be, when the heart becomes purified of all other ideas of trying to experience raga separately from Krishna, mundane rasa, huh? material rasa, as long as, we, as long as we have an affection on attraction for material rasa, which, you know, trying to, try to get the taste out of those objects in this world, then we cannot actually experience spiritual rasa. We can hear about it. Let's go talk about it maybe. And, you know, maybe imagine that that's my rasa, but a relationship, but it's, it, it's not really real. It's not, it's not a, a permanent state. It's just a dream due to the false ego. Um, so when we're completely purified of these, it's nice to aspire for that, but we shouldn't dream that we've got it. Some devotees gallivant. You heard that word, gallivant? You ever heard that word before, gallivant? It's an old English word. I don't know where it came. I haven't used it in at least a decade or more. Just suddenly shot out. Gallivant. It's kind of like you're going to gallop off with a, you know, a pre a preconception of what you're going to get us and you gallivant off to Radhakund or somewhere expecting there you're going to realize your eternal constitution relationship with Krishna right everything is going to be revealed there just by Dandavat Prakrama of Radhakund and you know wearing Radhakund tilak and dressing like a Radhakund Babaji and you know and thinking of sex life um, it doesn't work like that there's a little bit more to it than that. Anyway, we talked about that the other night a little bit from Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj's, um, let's say, words on, on that idea. Um, so let's get back down to earth, where we're really at. So the process. So let's see what Krishna says, how this works a little bit. This is the first verse of the 12th chapter. Arjuna inquired, which are considered to be most perfect? Those who are always properly engaged in your devotional service or those who worship? Oh my goodness. Hari Bo! Hare Krishna! Oh, I'm so blessed. Blessed by the best, as Bhakti Chirsa Maharaj used to say. And our best has come. Hari Bo! Sikhi Mahiti Prabhu! Oh, glorious to Srila Prabhupada! Why you've come all the way over? Nothing better to do. Ecstasy, Nothing know. better to do. Half the devotees have already left for Sankirtan. Oh. <laughs> they left at 6.30 this morning. Ma, Mahotsa and others left early this morning. And some left yesterday afternoon to go somewhere else. God. Are you ready for a Sankirtan today? <laughs> Woo. On a wheelchair, yeah. Somewhere or another. With the knees. You have to do the needy. You have to do the needy. <laughs> so thank you so much for coming over, Prabhuji. So wonderful to see you again. Huh? Thank you for coming. Everybody's in Vrindavan for Karchi. I know, isn't it amazing? <laughs> this is this is real Vrindavan. This is really Vrindavan. To be absorbed. We were hearing the other day what Radhakund really means. Bhakti Siddhanta's Describing Radha Kun means unalloyed service. 
absorption in service, spreading Krishna consciousness. That's Vrindavan. <laughs> we never used to do that. During Prabhupada's time, there was not really anything for Kartik. Do you remember that? No. Nobody went to India for no, Kartik. I don't we, <laughs> we used to offer lamps, but we, we would do it in the temple we're in. We never thought about going to India at that time. You know, Mayapur was the time everyone went, Gopanim time. Huh? That was what Prabhupada said and did. He was in Kartik. Oftentimes, probably in Vrindavan during that period of time. But generally speaking, devotees didn't, especially because the Christmas marathon was coming up very soon. Yeah. Now we have like seminars in the middle of the Christmas marathon all over the place. <laughs> if you try to do that in the 70s, you know, you, you're told, get, get lost, get out of here. Are you mad? Are you crazy? It's a Prabhupada book marathon, you know? Crazy. I mean, I know, it's nothing. I mean, it's good, but it's not what we used to do, you could say. And when Prabhupada would come, I don't know what it was like. Which temple you in during Prabhupada's time? Chicago, Chicago, yeah. Chicago, I don't know if you have the same experience, but whenever Prabhupada would come to London, at least in the latter few years, we weren't really doing book distribution in the early 70s much. It was a small time. But you know, the last few years, 76, 77, when Prabhupada came to London, you know, the, the, the rule of the day was double book distribution while he was there. Not that everyone hung around all day, you know, trying to get a, a, an orange peel or something from Prabhupada's plate, you know. <laughs> Maybe he'll say something. Maybe he'll come out and I can see him. You can't see him. Even Prabhupada's in the airport in Chicago, and the book distributors, they didn't stop, they just kept distributing books. They just stayed there and distributed books, yeah. Yeah, they just stayed there. Yeah. <laughs> Prabhupada, even in 77, on Prabhupada's last visit to London, you know, he came to the West the last time in August 77, and he was planning to come to the States, but he didn't come. He just came to London and went back to India. And hundreds of us came, but we doubled book distribution that week or two he was there. It, that, was how we, that was our service to Prabhupada. That's what we thought. We're only here to please Prabhupada. We're not here to just hang around. You know? We're here to please him, you know? And the boys were going out, you know, as soon as class was over, bang, they were out the door, you know, going, you know, like anything to try to distribute Prabhupada's books to bring him pleasure. And some of the boys thought the Prabhupada wouldn't be tired and he, too much for him to hear the Sankatan results. And some of his inner, inner crew were saying, Prabhupada, it's too much. I mean, they're giving us these scores, but it's, you know, not to read it out to you. Prabhupada said, this is what is giving me life. This is, this is where I'm getting my energy from. He wanted to hear the daily scores. He, he was so happy to hear the book scores every morning. They would be read to Prabhupada in his room. And, uh, you know, he was so pleased to see the spirit of the devotees to distribute his books. And although other things are important, and many other services have grown, developed, and have a long way to go. But, you know, book distribution is the foundation of our mission. And, it's always there. It's not that that's changed. Maybe different techniques have been employed and so on and so forth. But the principle is eternal principle. Whatever way it is, this knowledge has to be distributed. And although, you know, people are into computers and Kindles and mobile phones, and, you know, a lot of people are like that, but you can still see, I mean, it's just incredible to see. Um, I was looking at the a video of Mahotsa, he sent me this video last night of one lady, and I don't know where it was, it looked like it was some exhibition of some kind, and she was going wild, I don't know, if, she was like shaking like a pneumatic drill, you know. He was going like this, you know, looking at the Bhagavatam. I didn't know what was coming next, you know. It looked like she was having a, a breakdown, a nervous breakdown of some kind, you know. And she ended up taking the whole set of the, of the Bhagavatams and the CC as well. And, huh? $550 she gave. And she was like shaking and cr <laughs> Like something like this, you know. It's incredible. What can be arranged, you know, all over the world. And, you know, Still the book, there's nothing compared to the books. All the technology put together, it's not quite the same as having the book in your hand. Let's read on. So 
So Arjuna said, which is considered to be the most perfect? Those who are always properly engaged in your devotional service or those who worship the impersonal Brahman, the unmanifested? Well, this is basically what's being discussed here in the purport, which we just read, isn't it? We don't have time to read the purport because of that verse, because the devotees are going out shortly on, book about 20 of them, are, about one staying back, I think, me. Um, the Supreme Personality of God had said, those who fix, fix their minds on my personal form and are always engaged in worshipping me with great and transcendental faith are considered by me to be most perfect. We saw yesterday the perfect church. We were on the way to Harinam. Whoever was in the car, there was one church we passed. Big sign, the perfect church. They were claimed to be the perfect church. Well, we all know from, as we've read, anything a little bit more. Yes, you may call it the perfect church, okay. But there's a more perfect one. And there's a most perfect one. And Krishna consciousness is the most perfect. So give them some credit there. The most perfect church. But those who fully worship the unmanifest, if you want to, you can worship. I'm going to have to turn around my neck. It's giving me hell on earth. Um, can you move that forward a little bit so I can move my legs around? I'm twisted. That's it. I'm going to have to hold this book. If you want to give it a go, here you are. If you want to worship the unmanifested, seek his nodding his head there. We've had a go at it, perhaps. That which lies beyond the perception of the senses. This sounds very attractive, very esoteric, very mystical. The all-pervading, yes, me. Inconceivable, unchanging, fixed, and immovable. Whoa, that sounds really far out. That's for me. The impersonal, yes, the impersonal. Conception of the absolute truth. No more nasty relationships with people. Right? <laughs> Hustling me. <laughs> giving me a hard time. I can merge into the all-pervading Brahman and eternally feel peace, harmony, Brahmananda, bliss, a Brahma Jyoti, <sighs> nectar. <sighs> Tell me about it, man. How do I do it? by controlling the various senses and being equally disposed to everyone. Such persons engaged in the welfare of all at last achieve me. What's that mean? You? What's that mean? Achieve you. What's the other verse in Bhagavad Gita where Krishna says something similar? Bahunam jamane te jnanavam Yes, it is not very easy to attain that, is it? Especially those who try to do it by their own, you know, endeavor. Pretty tough, you know. But after many, many lifetimes, and Prabhupada referred to that for us in the purport, after many lifetimes, they may also come to him. They may not also. That depends. Only by the grace of a pure devotee is this possible. No matter what we are, karmi, jnani, yogi, or something else. By the mercy of meeting on and accepting that of a pure devotee. Only then can we begin this real path. Of course, there's different levels as we've heard of the path. And we hear in the 18th chapter an interesting verse. There's two, there's, every verse is interesting. But there's two verses in the 18th chapter, one on one. And one talks about how only by devotional service. Do you know that verse that you can understand me, Krishna says? Which is basically what this verse is also discussing. Only by pure devotional service can you understand me as I am. Huh? And what is that verse? Bhaktiya. Every verse you say, what's that verse? Very good, perfect. Learn the verses. 
I was reading yesterday, Prabhupada was saying how important it is to chant these verses. And not just the English, but the Sanskrit too, the vibration. We should chant. He said, you chant the verses. I spent so much time writing this. Well, what, what's the point otherwise? Just write it in English. What's the point? You know? How many scholars are being convinced anyway? You know? Some people are put off when they see all these funny letters and dashes and dots and so on. But it's important for our own realization and purification, and we generally miss it all. Bhakti mama bhijanati yavan yas chasmi tattva. Tatomam gatvato. Even I'm forgetting, getting an old man here. But learn these verses while you're young. Difficult to learn when you're old, isn't it, Ziki? To learn a verse when you're 75 years old or 80 years old is not so easy. Huh? If we can just somehow or another remember the Hare Krishna mantra, that's our only hope sometimes. <laughs> You start to wonder, am I going to forget the Maha Mantra as well, you know? <laughs> it's like ridiculous, it's crazy. Get by Maha Shantim, Chitti, maybe, is that the verse? Anyway, after many, many births, and Krishna is very hard to, to be, he, why? Because he, it's only when he desires, when he's pleased, when he's satisfied, he reveals himself. You can't make him reveal himself. Show me God. Have you ever had that on Sangatan? you ever had people say that? You say God exists, then show me. Where is he? Little Hiranyakashipu there, isn't it? <laughs> I don't believe in... Something. My mother, when, I said, when she said to me, I asked her one time, does God exist? He said, no, of course not. Otherwise I see him, she said. I never see, I never see him. Amazing how... Ordinary people, they have that little Hiranya Kashupu nature, isn't it? <laughs> Unless I can see, I don't believe. And if I do, I'll kill him. <laughs> Get him out the way. <laughs> it's like the Mayavadis. Huh? Get him out the way. Use him as long as you can, then kick him out the window. You know, kick him out the door. Get out of here. I'm God now. You get lost. It's only when one's luck, fortunate, the most fortunate. The great fortune is the opportunity to meet the pure devotees of the Lord. Huh? Or they come out of their causeless mercy and, and you know, sacrifice their lives trying to wake us up. We do everything we can to stay asleep, hold on to our garbage, stay in our dreamlike world, even on the spiritual path, dreaming about who we are or what we're going to be and this and that, all kinds of nonsense. But they try to wake us up and they never stop, they're the oceans of compassion, always trying to wake us up. So, and when we actually can't cotton on to what they're giving us and hold on to it tightly, then we can make some progress. By holding on, perhaps I just hold on to my dhoti. So we just hold on to their instructions, follow their path, follow that path. And that path leads to, to the Lord in the heart, then giving clearing our heart, first of all, and then giving direction towards what's next. And maybe we've got different natural tendencies, but he reveals that to us within the heart. It hasn't been, we haven't realized the objective yet, but we've realized the attraction towards it. And our natural inclination will start to evolve. The path of raga will start to evolve, as this verse says, what the purport says. So that's another verse. Now let's read the next one. There's two verses. And the other verse, which we haven't mentioned, um, Brahma Bhuta Prasanatma, you know that one? No. Next to Bhakti Mama Vijayanti. It's a very famous verse, isn't it? Brahma Bhuta Prasanatma Nasochati, you know? <laughs> ah, this one you seem to know pretty well. They're all mostly young devotees here. They've already been in the movement a few years, you know? They're all new boys. I was telling them yesterday, you've been in the movement two years, why haven't you opened a temple already? Another one. You remember, I don't know when you joined, but when I joined, the night I got shaved, the day I got shaved up, the door was shaving me, Samanath Prabhu. He said, where are you from? I said, I'm from Swindon. He said, oh, fantastic. We don't have a temple there yet. Maybe after a couple of weeks, you can go there and open a temple. That's what he said to me. I thought, well, this is far out, you know. <laughs> couple of weeks, yeah. Now, after, you know, 20 years, you never even dream about it, mostly. People don't. There's no, there's no spirit of, of, you know, pioneering spirits almost disappeared. You remember those days? Yeah, I like 74, so oh, a little bit, a little bit after that whip. That was 71, 72. The, 
in England, we were, we were like two years behind the States. So that was like 69 mood, you know. Open the temple every day, you know, go somewhere. Just open it and you may close it the next week and go somewhere else and do the same thing. But it, that was the spirit, you know. <laughs> it was like crazy. You know? <laughs> Huh? No money, you just open it. Nobody? No money, you just open it. Just open it, never mind. Depend on Krishna. No money, by the way. Where am I going to stay? You'll find out when you get there. Don't ask me. You just go there and start. Krishna will provide. And if you have that experience, we had that experience a few times of doing that. Just going to a place not knowing anybody there, having no money whatsoever, alone, not with anyone else. And just having to look around and <laughs> somehow other things happen. <laughs> There's a bridge you can sleep under. <laughs> they used to do that. They used to sleep. I didn't get that. I didn't have that one. I, I was lucky or unlucky. But in Paris, for day, weeks, they were sleeping under bridges when they first went to Paris. They couldn't speak a word of French. Sleeping under bridges. They had no money. They were just every day begging for some bread and some... They didn't take wine. Although in most people would give you a bottle of wine if you begged for it um, in France. Bread, cheese, whatever they could get, you know, to survive, basically. And one by one, Krishna revealed everything. And that type of spirit, you know, that's how, that's how you really get the mercy. Huh? You really feel the mercy of Lord Nityananda. You really feel the mercy. The Srila Prabhupada didn't do much different when he went to the, to the States, did he? We sang Markane Bhagavat Dharma last night and talked about it. Uh, but when Prabhupada went to the States, that was basically, he didn't know anyone in the States. He had no money. He knew how, what was going to unfold. He went to New York. He had an address of Dr. Mishra. And that was about it. It was a Mayavadi. Wouldn't let Prabhupada speak. Let him lead Kirtan. But, uh, you know, Prabhupada had no con, no con, no just completely alone. Totally alone. He wasn't like sent, he was sent by his Guru Dave. But it wasn't like, you know, someone says, go and open a center in, you know, some place or another, wherever it is. And, but there's another, you can always go back to your, you know, home base. But Prabhupada didn't really, I mean, he had Vrindavan, but that wasn't really as, like the same thing, you know. That meant he, you know, he, he was determined to fulfill his spiritual master's instruction and take Vrindavan everywhere, even as far afield as Atlanta. This far distant corner of the world. He said that in Gainesville, this far distant corner of the world. Huh? Who can imagine in Atlanta? They call it the Bible Belt, is that right? Down here? That Krishna consciousness, you know, that in one day, maybe not in Atlanta, but today, maybe, of course, a lot of Indian people, but 3,000 books, Mahotsa's target today is 3,000 books in one day. I mean, that's unimaginable, even, even in those days. I mean, back in the, I remember the first day I went out. Um, on book distribution, I told this a few weeks ago in another place, but the first, this is my first, uh, I'm going to go on this verse again tomorrow. We don't have time. This is too sweet. And I've got all these, these little quotes which I wanted to share. We don't have time to share. And tomorrow, are you going to be here tomorrow? Anyone going to be here tomorrow? Somebody's going to be here? So we'll try to share them tomorrow morning. That will be it. Because there's no class tonight. They're all staying out till midnight tonight. Midnight? Not midnight. No, not quite. Late, anyway. Out till late. So I remember the first day I went out. For the next morning, I shaved up on Saturday night. Sunday morning, they sent me out door to door with another new back to, back to Paul. We, they sent us to a place called Earl's Court. Yesterday, we met one lady on the Harinam, an English lady. And she was from Chiswick, next door neighbor to Earl's Court. It's basically the same suburb. And that was my first ever book distribution. No, it wasn't. It was my, I went as a hippie. I would sometimes go on the street holding Mac Back to Godhead magazine. Like this, like a, a, a newspaper salesman. We didn't have a clue what to say, you know, just hold the magazine up. And so, like, you know, I remember the first time I did that on Oxford Street with the Harinam party, it was a hippie, just visiting. And three people took, came and took and gave a donation. I, and that was the top distributor for the day. <laughs> so, wow. I was, I was very, I felt very chuffed. I thought, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm really special. There must be something special about me. I'm the top book distributor. I was, I was very humble about it. And then the first day I was sent out next morning, the next first service, you know, going door to door in Earl's Court, you know. First door, I thought, I was a bit nervous. 
I've never done this in my life before. First door, and some guy came to the door. He only had his underpants on, nothing else. He looked really weird. He was probably gay, actually. I don't know. He looked really weird. He looked, I mean, he just looked. I mean, there's a kind of look, nothing. I'm not, not saying he wasn't. He, he was like shocked when he saw me at the door. I don't know what, what he, I don't know what he was doing. And he was completely shocked. He looked at me as if I was a Martian. He'd obviously never seen a Hare Krishna before. He was completely shocked. <laughs> and I was shocked too, you know. Like, <laughs> it was a, a mutual <laughs> interaction there. So, what do you want? And I said, um, mm. <laughs> we're just, you know, we're just showing these books, you know. And, I had, and what books we had? We only had big, hardbound Krishna books, big ones. And there was only two volumes in those days. They were bigger than the three volume ones, two volumes. And I had these big, fat Krishna books, you know. And that's all we had. We didn't have any other books at all. We had to try to sell those. And they, none had been sold. I mean, they had a previous ish which they had sold, but we were a new bunch. We were all new group. The old devotees had all gone off to India. There was only new boys left in London then. Like, you know, been in the movement a few months, you know. One or two had been more than six months. That was it. And all the old devotees, like Sham Sundar and all these devotees, they more or less all gone to India, you know. And so uh, the guy the guys said, well, what is it? And he looked at it. He may have been on drugs or something. He, looked, he was looking at the pictures, and I could see his eyes going like, you know, those early pictures were pretty psychedelic, you know. <laughs> they were really, I don't know if the devotees were, <laughs> were still suffering the effects of psych psychedelics, but they were pretty psychedelic paintings, I must say, <laughs> pretty far out, you know. This guy was definitely captivated by the paintings, I said, and then he said, wow, how much is it? I said, you know, I didn't know, I, didn't, I can't remember what I said, donation or what. He just gave me a fiver and took the book. That was a lot of money in those days. First, first door I knocked on, I thought, my God, this is so easy. <laughs> <laughs> just knock on the door, they come out, they get mesmerized and they give you money. This is the easiest thing I've ever done. That was the last book I distributed in two weeks. <laughs> the one and only in two weeks. And no one else did any either. We were going here, here and there, four of us, and not a single book all day long between us, you know. Not one. It's like, I got used to it after a while, and it's still like that with me. I go out on the street, and if I can do one book, it's like a big day. <laughs> I just don't. You know, some people have got it, and some people, whatever it is, and, but that doesn't mean we don't do it. That part of the point is not the, the result, isn't it? It's the surrender, it's the acceptance of the spiritual master's will, Krishna's will. For those who are attached, whose minds are attached to the unmanifested, impersonal feature of the Supreme, advancement is very troublesome. To make pro progress in that discipline is always difficult for those who are embodied. It's very difficult. We forgot to give the translation of Brahma Bhuta Prasanatma, didn't we? Who knows the translation of that verse? Um, Abhimanyu? Uh, satisfied, uh, Brahma Bhuta Prasanatma, can satisfy in himself, doesn't lament, doesn't anchor, no such nickels. He's friends of all living entities. Um, as a person who worships me with uh, devotion and devotion. Yeah, something along those words. Something along those lines. <laughs> when it comes to that level of spiritual Brahman, that level of Brahman who no longer hangers or laments and is equally disposed to all living entities, what does he do? He, At that stage, what do you do? Engage. He engages in pure devotional service unto me. So this is another interesting feature. Okay. It's possible, as we've heard in this verse and purport today, that by the mercy of the Lord and the mercy of the devotees, that someone on different paths may eventually come to that platform of devotional service. But here we're talking of something else. We're talking of pure devotional service. Pure devotional service. And that really begins when one's on the platform of that spiritual platform, that Brahman platform. It doesn't mean that we come with uh, Brahman bodies or Maya bodies or something. But every devotee should, one time, I don't have the reference, but we were always told this, that Prabhupada said, 
if you haven't realized you know, your, your, your spirit soul yet, you haven't really begun devotional service. We're following, we're practicing. But spontaneous, it, it, it has to be with realization. Not just, you know, <laughs> that's there and that's got to be there in the beginning. And that's absolutely required, it's foundational. But ultimately it has to come to that platform of Brahman. The spiritual platform, not acting on the platform of conditional, whatever condition we've got, maybe we enjoy what we're doing or we enjoy the results or something like that, or we have great determination and faith, which is fantastic. But further than that, actual realization. When or oh when will that day be mine? Kabi habi bolo Aparada Gucci, Shudanamaruchi. You know that song? Back to even other Sakwa? Kabi Habi Bolo Sedi Namar. Beautiful song. When oh when will that day be mine? Taste for the name increasing. Offenses ceasing. Taste for the name increasing. When in my heart will your mercy shine? When oh when will that day be mine? Back to even Takos. Offenses ceasing, all this nonsense. Cleared from the heart, and then only an attraction for the holy name will really develop. When will that day be mine? You remember those translations of Achutananda, that poetic? I always have, on my PowerPoint, I, I use his, I don't like them, I don't dislike the new translations, they're more literal. But I like his poetic rendition of that song, it's so beautiful. I asked him about that, you know, I said, huh? You wrote that one very poetically, why didn't you write the others that way? That's funny, it's just that one song. Yeah, it was so nice. I'm not a poet, so I didn't do any more. Yeah. But he did that one, it was so nice. Yeah. You can memorize it. You can't memorize all these other ones, you know. Bhagavatam 11th Canto says that you know, Krishna's pastimes should be presented in song and poetry. Drama, song, poetry. This is how you remember them. It goes deep in our. I, I was in, where was I in? Um, in South, Af South Africa in the 90s, I remember. And I was doing drama after drama after drama. Every program had drama, spontaneous dramas. And we, it was Madhavendra Puri's appearance day. So we did Madhavendra Puri's. Nobody knew it was coming up except for one devotee. I just asked him to get a few props here and there, ready, unknown to others. It was an amazing experience, you know. I just spontaneously on the spot just engage everybody in, in the drama, you know. And to this day, whenever those devotees meet me in India or anywhere, say, I'll never forget those pastimes of that drama we did in 19, 30 years ago. You know? it, like, it sticks in the heart, you know. We took everybody through the whole thing. Everybody was a part of the drama, you know. And you can do that here. Very, you've got some bushes outside, you know. You go through the whole thing. You have, you know, the whole prasad, all the prasad for the feast, for the program was all offered to Gopal, you know, on the mount, on the hill. And the day we had a, a day, you know, I got one, this one devotee, I got him to bring his statue deity of Gopal. And he was hiding in the bushes at the back of the property. And we're all going, nobody knew what was going on until it happened. We're all going out there with sticks and things, you know, trying to get through the thicket and to shop it. And then everyone's shocked, there's this Gopal deity in the bushes. <laughs> and then trying to pick him up and like making out, he weighs 100,000 tons and something, this and that, you know carrying him into the temple room again, you know, into the hall where they were having the program and installing him and then getting two devotees, you know, putting threads around them and making them, you know, it's like a whole scene, you know, it's like you live these things, it becomes real, it's not just a, something you, uh, oh, let's read about it in the Bhagavad in that CC or something, it's great, but you know, it becomes a natural kind of remembrance in your heart. You've got an indelible remembrance in the heart and this is how we can change the thought patterns in our heart. And drama, not these silly slap, the slap, what do they call them? Slapstick. Huh? Slapstick. 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 Kind of, you know, stupid dramas. They're okay for, you know, attracting, you know, stupid people. But, you know, it's not really, you know, some kind of, you know, crazy. But Leela should not be like that. The Leela should be what it is. Don't make joke of it should be what it is, whether Krishna or Gora Leela, should be what it is, you know. And it's amazing how it, it has a powerful effect on people's lives and doors' lives. Same thing with poetry, yeah, same thing. Prabhupada appreciated 
properly presented dramas very much. Everything like that. Anyway, there's so much can be said about this verse, we have to get on. You've got to take breakfast, you've got to get out on Sankatan. Actually, we should always be on Sankatan, 24-7. It doesn't mean just being on the street, does it? What do you think, Siki? It's a state of consciousness, isn't it? That we see everything as Krishna's property and how to engage everything in Krishna's service. I'll just read one little quote, which I thought was a nice quote. I managed eventually to find it. It was mixed up. I've been trying to go through notes of like 20 years of notes the last week, the last four days. On the plane, I spent four, five, six hours on the flight from London to Boston, just going through old notes and trying to categorize them and remove the 10 million duplications, which you tend to get on the computer. Um, and, you know, it's a big task, but just for cleaning up the computer and remembering things a little bit better. So one of the quotes I came across, we mentioned one of them yesterday. I'll read that now as it is, because I didn't speak about, I didn't have it yesterday, but I'll read it. This is what Prabhupada says. This is from Bombay in 1975. So the best policy to control the mind is to desire how to spread Krishna consciousness. This is the best. And it's a longer purport. I won't read it all. But at the end of the purport, of the, it's a lecture actually. So this brain taxation, if you engage in Krishna's service, now we can understand this is not spontaneous devotional service at this stage. It's not Raga Bhakti. This is Vaidhi Bhakti. So this brain taxation, if you engage in Krishna's service, how to spread Krishna consciousness, how to convince people about Krishna, how to take them to Krishna's desire, Sarva Dharma Yogya. And in this way, if you go on making plan for spreading Krishna consciousness, then your mind is controlled. That's Prabhupada's quote. So that's, there are many quotes on mind control, but that's one in relation to, you could say, let's get out of there, um, what we were discussing yesterday. Now we'll go to another. And this is more in terms of, um, here's a nice one. And this, I'll just leave this with you. This is 1968 in Los Angeles. That must be right in the beginning when Dayananda Prabhu was living in LA and they're living in a garage or they're serving in a temple in a garage. Prabhupada went in 68 from, from San Francisco to LA in the end of 68. And this is what he said in a lecture there. If, and this is early days, so bear it in mind, but the principle is still the same. If your aim is to engage him in Krishna consciousness, if you do something which is not very straight, that is allowed, the devotees laugh. You know what that means? Is that terminology understood? Something that's not very straight? because you were doing very good to him. This is 68, this is not during the 70s. There was no book distribution in 68, none. Practically speaking, nothing. Maybe some magazines. Because you were doing very good to him. Suppose a man is a drunkard. So if you say, oh, all right, I'll give you a very, oh, the drunkard, no, suppose you say, I know, I think probably means Anyway, get the idea. I'll just read what Prabhupada, what's written here, but it doesn't make literal sense. Oh, all right. I'll give you a very nice bottle of whiskey at cheap price. Oh, no. This is what it is. It's amazing. Listen to this. Uh, I don't know if you're going to employ this one. I, I didn't read it rightly. So suppose if you say, oh, all right, you're a devotee. Oh, all right, you meet a drunkard. I'll give you a very nice bottle of whiskey at a cheap price. Give me $15. Whew. We're putting some dangerous thoughts in these devotees' minds here. Ooh. And if you take $15 and engage it in Krishna consciousness, that cheating is allowed. And everyone laughed. <laughs> of course, Prabhupada's probably talking to people who are high on various kinds of intoxications at that time. Because that $15, he'll, otherwise he'll take it and drink anyway. So you have to some way or another take away that $15 and engage in Krishna consciousness so that you have done good for him. I remember one time in Paris about 10, seven years, our first Christmas marathon, um, and after I'd been involved in France, um, first one for maybe 20 years, 
in France. And the, first, the last night we were in, in uh, Champs-Élysées, if you ever heard of that. It's a big street packed with people. It's like Fifth Avenue of Paris, you know. And uh, on Christmas, New Year's Eve, New Year's Eve is packed, mostly with Arabic people, packed. And we go, used to go, we don't go there now for various reasons. We went there on Sankirtan, Harinam, others trying to distribute a few books as well. And we were a very small time. And I remember this one drunkard came up, you know, and he was dancing with us. And there were 20, 30 of us doing kirtan. The drunkard came up. He put a bottle, an unopened bottle of wine in front of us. Unopened, as a gift. He had some good fortune. Then he span off somewhere. A little while later, another drunkard joined in with the kirtan and spinning around. And I could see him looking at the bottle of wine. You know, I think that was his attraction. You know, he was getting very attracted. So I kind of said, you know, we had a basket for donations. I said, you can have it if you put some money in the basket over there. And he did. He picked up, all, took all of his coins out, put it in the basket and took the wine away. <laughs> A little bit like this here. <laughs> I didn't know about this quote at the time. Something was scratching their heads, you know. And I said, that was clever. Different devotees said different things, you know, but it worked anyway. He got his wine. He came, I think I gave him a little book as well on top of the wine. I can't remember, but I think I did. Anyway, like that, probably. Same. Some or other. Don't remember. Don't forget. I always think of this and one thinks I'm, I'm, I'm not the type of person that it's very easy for me to ask money from people I never did in my whole life money has always come to me I never ask usually so on Sankatan you generally have to ask people it's not very often people come up saying can I give you this money can you give me a book please not many times does that happen does it it's, it does happen but very rare it happened last week in Paris I was on the book table there in the center of Paris and one black guy came up, I thought he was going to come up to try to pinch the money. We have a little donation. I thought he was going to pinch it. He said, if I give you this money, can you give me that book? I was surprised. He never asked a single question. Big black man. And he gave me a, you know, a few euros and took the book. It doesn't usually happen like that, but sometimes. Usually you have to really you know, work hard to get people to give money, usually. Is it? Is it like that here? I don't yeah. know. Certainly like that in Europe. You know, that's, that's the hardest part usually. <laughs> it's hard enough to get them to stop. Is it hard enough to get them to hold the book or to even show any appreciation for it? In France, the first thing they say is free, isn't it? Free. You're giving me free. That's the first thing they say. <laughs> and you, know, you have to say something to try to follow up on that one. And uh, then when the money comes to it, oh, I've got no money. <laughs> no money. They all say that. No money. First they say non merci, that means no thank you. Non merci, no mercy. I don't want the mercy, no, go away. No mercy, please. And then they say non argent, no money, no money, no money, no money. They say, sometimes they say if you've got a, oh, I don't have a card. I only have a card, you get the machine. No, 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 and then they go away again. They're not interested either, even if you've got a card machine. What to do? They're a little bit more reciprocal here, I say. <laughs> Much more reciprocal. <laughs> Couldn't believe it yesterday. How, what washing you do? Do the books? Amazing. Hare Krishna. So have a great day on book distribution, and don't worry. Just do. Just try to take shelter of Srila Prabhupada. Desire his spirit, and be an instrument for the will of the Lord. That's all. Okay. Sometimes Krishna helps us to get off the bodily platform of thinking I'm the doer, which comes to the mind of even the most seasoned book distributors sometimes. We start thinking we're doing well, I'm good, I'm whatever. Sometimes those thoughts come in. The false ego comes in. And then if you're lucky, Krishna will you know, help to deflate that false ego. I don't know if that happens here, but you sometimes go hours and hours then with not even a magazine going out, what to speak of. You can't even give it away. You know, they won't even take, you know, they take the magazine, rip it up or something. 
or you think, at last you find a person you think is interested, 20 minutes later, have you heard of Lord Jesus? <laughs> oh God, Krishna! <laughs> <laughs> Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Gantara Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Vrihat Madanga ki jai. Hare Krishna. Jai.